All right. So here's the old outfit. I've stripped it of pretty much everything so far. I'm going to be putting in a new power surge protector. Uh, this is it so far. This is the old thing. I'm going to retrofit this to work with the new system temporarily until I build a new uh, console for the new computer. Now, you know, we've got all, we got the spaceship there and all the stuff. This uh, apparently was a working studio at one point. Uh, it was all wired for sound when I got here. So I actually could put, uh, there's pretty decent acoustics in here. I could put a decent sound system other than just the two speakers that I have. If I want a surround sound system, I can have that. So I'm gonna clean this up and you can see kind of how uh, completely grody all this is. It's dusty as hell. Now, a while back, maybe a year ago, I put this extension on here so I could have a multi-monitor multi setup. Let's look at all that dirt. Man, I'm surprised anything even runs. Okay, I've got the filing cabinet out in the light here. Check it out. <laughs> I actually did the paint job on that. It was a... Uh, I won't rest until almost everything in my place looks like Fallout 76. So I kind of did a number on that. I hate to kind of move it aside, but I don't know. I'm pretty much running out of space here. All right, coming along here. Got the monitors all cleaned up, put back, making a space. Everything's cleaned up. So pull back here, you can see. I wanted to start with a clean slate. So it's the next day and I'm still working on this. Now what I have here is the platform I'm going to put the new machine on. All it is is basically a piece of wood, two concrete blocks that I painted uh, black. And so I wanted to have a nice platform to keep it off the floor. That's, there's so much dust going around. Let's see, there we go. Yeah, that's about right. See that? So this is just a cheap, uh, basic alternative to basically uh, get me by until I build a, uh, a better console. I always liked uh, Casey Neistat. He, he said something one time, probably a lot of times he was talking about build over buy. Instead of buying something, he'd rather build something. And he was very creative. Here we have everything set up now, for the most part. I've cleared off everything. Started with clean slate. Everything is in order. Hooked up. Let's take a look. But we have a light up keyboard, which is great. It's a gaming keyboard, a big time surge suppressor, and if you can see, I just love it. It's so cyberpunk looking, and I've got DaVinci Resolve up. I, I really don't know much about DaVinci Resolve, I've just been playing around with it. I just took a music video and started kind of, just kind of screwing around with the timeline and everything. Uh, doing just some cuts. I've looked online at some of the training and some of it's a little bit confusing, but it's really just best to get in there and start playing around with it. That's how I learned how to use Final Cut Pro. It was intimidating at first, uh, you know, years ago when it first came out. I, just, I started, after a while, I, just, I became really, really good at it. And uh, so I'm looking forward to, there's always a learning curve on anything. But yeah, here's all the, uh, inside to this thing it's pretty impressive um it is liquid cooled uh 36 gigs of ram stromberg downdraft engine 
It has uh, four fans, all kinds of uh, hookups. Uh, I've got the headphone jack going into my speaker system. Well, okay, so that's the workstation, and it's based on an Asus uh, tough gaming system. It's a gaming machine, pretty much, and I'm lucky to get it, really. Uh, the, I decided to go ahead and do it because of the uh, opportunity to, uh, my tech guy, he kind of, he wanted to build one of these like this, and he said, you know, I can cut you a whole big deal on it. Uh, I mean, it wasn't cheap, but I, I saved thousands of dollars by having him build it. And uh, so the opportunity was there. And so, you know, it's pretty, pretty top of the line stuff, really. I decided it was time to make a video. So when I started to install that, I decided that's what I'll make the video about. I feel kind of bad, really, because... I don't play video games really anymore. I haven't in a long time. I probably won't. And, you know, there's some kid out there, some a gamer that would love to have a machine like that. But I'm just going to use it really uh, for DaVinci Resolve, really, at this point. That was the main uh, purpose of all that. That's my goal. So, so I think I've got that covered. The science fiction show that I'm working on, I'm going to be doing some green screen on it, some things like that, I think. Some you know a lot of more uh, in the way of editing music. It's it's going to have a lot of music, uh, interesting, and some effects, in camera effects as well as practical models. And I told a, a buddy of mine, uh, I, I said that I'm not going to build. I can't build all this stuff. I don't think. I mean, as quick as I could. If you He's a model maker too and an artist. I said, if you want to make some of these background spaceships and, and, and pieces of uh, science fiction space gear, you know, I'll, uh, you build it, I'll weather it and uh, paint it and everything and, and we'll go from there. And so far he's done basically very little. I'm doing it all myself as usual. I'm doing everything myself. So it's kind of a one man show, Tom's projects as usual. Let's talk filmmaking. So sit back for a minute. I get you a drink. Let's talk filmmaking. Uh, this pertains to my story, but if you, you know, vi like with this uh, video editing now, the way that it is, it's pretty much this was the best time in the world to get into all this. I thought I decided that's why I jumped at the chance with Di Da Vinci Resolve and everything like that. I use nonlinear editing. I use nonlinear editing a lot in the past, like with the uh, Adobe Premiere, the Final Cut Pro, and things like that. But if you go like way back, like say back in the early days of TV, 1950s, when they had that, they didn't even have videotape back then. All those old shows were filmed live, or they were they were video, video, videographed, however you want to say it, with just a video camera, uh, with ele electronic tubes. And it was broadcast live. It was broadcast. They didn't tape it. They would film it with uh, I made probably 16 millimeter at the same time that they were uh, uh, broadcasting it. That's why some of those shows still exist and some of them don't. Some of the old black and white. But they had black and white uh, TV cameras back then. And when they came up with tape... The first tape was like reel to reel, a big two inch, I believe, two inch videotape. I've actually seen a big reel of that before. They used it up. So, sometimes they would uh, still use it, uh, like in uh, production companies, still use it maybe up into the 80s, something like that. So, and uh, you, when they did the first uh, video editing, they had to actually splice, cut and splice physically and tape with sticky tape the uh, back together just like you would uh, uh, cinema film celluloid and then for a long time the three uh, three quarter inch cassettes uh, these great big uh, video cassettes was the standard and then beta cam for like news gathering that type of thing and for home you had the VHS and the beta things like that uh, great big cameras um, 
there was a lot of snot. Like when I first started doing like documentaries and that type of thing, I had like home video equipment. And there's a lot of snobbery against uh, home video equipment. You either had to be shooting, uh, if you weren't shooting professional format, they wanted you to be shooting Super VHS or the High 8. That's what they had like in the uh, early 90s with high videotape and the small, uh, like the little handy cams, that type of thing. And there was 8mm and high 8. <clears throat> high 8 was uh, like a big step up at that time from the VHS stuff. And uh, so there was a lot of snobbery. The only thing, uh, in, and then there was snobbery against uh, uh, videotape in general for shooting any kind of feature or, or documentary a lot, really. Uh, they wanted you to shoot on like you know at least 16 millimeter the only thing shot on videotape would have been like adult films and things like that so you see where that was going I encountered a lot of snooty people back in the 90s when I was trying to kind of get in the industry and that's when all the indie filmmaking and things were going on uh, so you've got two timelines here going. You've got the you know computer animation and editing, and then you've got like your uh, video and TV, and then you've got your like film and movie quality type thing. But these will all eventually meld together. And so you had the Super VHS and the Digital Eight. I never had any Super VHS. I just had regular VHS when I shot the Mothman in '95. That's what I used. And I edited like tape to tape, like I had a VCR here and a VCR there, and like a, a, a title generator, just like a little inexpensive mixer where you could at least have some control over the uh, the gain and the, the audio if it was low, if it didn't, if you had something that needed to be leveled out, you had these little slidey things. And uh, it did work, it was pretty cool. It did work, it was painstaking, but it did work. And that was all you could do at the time. I mean, that, that was about the best you could come up with. And well, and also when, it, when I went to when I went to college, like they always said, film school was a waste of time. Everybody's always said that. So I went when I went to college. I went for animation and like uh, computer graphics, that type of thing. And they didn't even have the Max and Photoshop then. They had these Amiga computers, and those old Amiga Commodore computers didn't even have a hard drive. I've tried to explain this to people. There's no hard drive, no operating system. You had uh, a floppy disk that had your program on it and you had a floppy disk that you put in that you saved your work on. And that's one program at a time. No operating system. You didn't have a mouse or uh, like a graphic pen type thing. They had scanners, that type of stuff. But that's what we did, animation and uh, it's called DigiPaint. I'm talking way back. I'm dating myself with that now. So then you had, you know, so any filmmaking, all that kind of stuff was going on. Uh, you had the video toasters, computer animation, early CGI was coming up, but not so much the video editing type thing. So when I when I did the Mothman, the internet was just kind of in its infancy still. So the original idea was to sell Mothman on like Strange Magazine and all those uh, magazines that came out like Fate. I took out an ad in there. But then I started kind of advertising it on the net. I didn't have a website yet, but I started putting it on the net. And I barely made the money back. It was a movie made shot. For about a thousand dollars, that was the goal: was to shoot a movie for under a thousand dollars, shoot a documentary, that type of thing. And then a few years later, of course, it came out with the Blair Witch Project, which is really good because I think that that's the one aspect of that movie was that in that scene where Heather has the little high eight camera, and the other guy has uh, a 16 millimeter black and white and they're filming each other kind of going around doing this little thing. I think that kind of passed the torch into video and then nowadays every movie 
every Hollywood movie is filmed digitally. It's filmed electronically. There's no film anymore. That you know that that did away with film. So I'm going to sit here. I'm going to work on some, uh, do some of the Da Vinci Resolve. I'm going to work on it. Uh, do some tutorials. I think really just messing around with it uh, works just as about as well as anything. Um, it's pretty intuitive. I found out. And I'm going to see what I can do. So there's no excuse now for me to not start in the future having uh, just a little bit better uh, video quality. And st also start thinking about what I'm shooting. I don't have a 4K camera yet. And I'm just learning, but we'll get there. In the next video, I'm going to go over some of the practical models and uh, props and costumes that I've been working on. So we'll go over that in the next video. So stay tuned. I'll see you soon.